got very curious about this beetle. We wanted to study more about it. They evolved from the flying beetle. So originally, many, many, many million years ago, the beetle was flying. At some point, just decided to stay on the ground. When you look at the flying beetle, it has some kind of lids that actually protect the wings. And also they are very helpful for the flying process as well. But this terrestrial beetle that decided to go back to the ground didn't need the actuation of these lids. So they actually remain there and they start connecting. The way nature processed that connection, he made it with this kind of suture. This suture looks like a chisel puzzle where there is some kind of interlocking. We found that there are two different layers of protection. So they are connected with this blade structure that basically prevents any kind of motion, right? So there is no deformation. So that will be the first layer. If for any reason the load exceeds that one that actually will break this link, what happens is that you have the lamination. So there's going to be more graceful failure, which really allows for energy dissipation. Yes, the material fails because it's not elastic anymore, but it dissipates energy. So it allows a lot of time to deform, which, you know, gives you a chance to escape for the beetle. Or for us, if we are actually applying this to structures, it allows us time to, you know, evacuate a building. Now that we make the observation and we confirm that the beetle is the optimum geometry, then we actually go back to the models and try to understand the why. Because if we understand how, we can extrapolate to other materials. So right now we have polymers. Can we then, you know, take this information and, and put it in metals or ceramics? <laughs>